YouTube. What's going on? Attorney Tom here in today's video. We're going to be reacting to Key and Peele's rap album Confessions. I made a video yesterday about can rap lyrics be used in court and I said this. So in short, that Key and Peele sketch is a little bit more over exaggerated than real life. So last night after I posted the video, I thought I should just film a react to this sketch. This video is going to be more on the analysis side. If you want more of the educational side, watch my previous video. Housekeeping matter, I'm going to be doing analysis under the federal rules of criminal procedure. Let's go! And last thing before we begin, please make sure you hit that like button. It really means a lot. It helps push the video out to the YouTube algorithm so more people can see it and more people can join our community. We've been growing like crazy. I think we just hit 160,000 subscribers. I really cannot believe that. First things first, I do not care that you're a multi-platinum selling rapper, Gunrack. What I care about is that I 100% know that you murdered Darnell Simmons. So, you better start talking. First things first, never talk to the police without a lawyer. If you ever find yourself in that situation, you should say, Officer, I will not speak without my lawyer present. I invoke the Fifth Amendment. And then shut up. Case closed. End of video. Thanks for watching. Okay. Not really. <laughs> yeah, but you ain't got none. <laughs> got a cigarette. <laughs> I, you, you know, I'm actually, I'm very glad that you said that. Uh, because I, respectfully, I beg to differ. I killed Darnell, yeah, I shot him with my knife. I shot him nine times, 9 p.m. on the dime. And by the way, it was November night. Okay, so the song says he shot a gentleman by the name of Darnell, shot him with his nine, a nine millimeter, shot him nine times on November 9th. So remember, there's two different evidentiary concerns here. One, could the rap song be used to charge, to arrest the rapper? And two, if they do charge and arrest the rapper, could the rap song be used in a court of law? in the case against him. Remember, all you need to arrest somebody is probable cause. Probable cause is a fair probability that the defendant committed the crime alleged. It is unclear how our suspect got to the interview room, but presumably he came there on his own free will and accord because if he hadn't, that would mean that the officers had already gotten an arrest warrant for him, which means they've already established probable cause, which means that this conversation would probably be irrelevant. So I'm going to assume that right now the suspect is not under arrest. So in order to arrest somebody, all you need is probable cause. Remember, probable cause is just the fair probability that something happened. Probable cause needs to be based on facts. It can't be just a hunch. And I think that's what makes this sketch funny because the officer clearly has a hunch, but it's going to overplay the line between a hunch and corroborating evidence. Let's keep going. I got a vivid imagination. I couldn't have sat down now. I was at my cousin's birthday party. Red Lobster, November 9th. Okay. So our suspect claims he has an alibi, which actually would make sense. So a big thing when determining whether or not lyrics could be used as evidence, whether in court or before court, is you look at whether or not the rap lyrics are autobiographical or whether or not they come from a third person narrator. Certainly you can write songs about experiences you didn't actually have. Music is supposed to tell stories and I would go as far to say as most songs are like this. So the suspect could very well claim this was his imagination, but again, you're gonna look for corroborating evidence. I wanna know how Darnell was killed, if it was with a nine millimeter, if he was shot nine times, and if he was shot on November 9th, because that would be enough for probable cause for me. Let's keep going. A red Lobster? Mm -hmm. Jeez, I gotta tell you, Gunrack, I, I find that really hard to believe. 
I got an alibi. Birthday red lobster. When in reality, I shot Darnell like a mobster. <laughs> it's a lie. Anyone could tell this if you know about my allergy to all shellfish. Just confess, Gunrack. I confess that shellfish is the only thing that rhymes with tell this. Okay. All jokes aside, the next lyrics claim that his alibi was a lie, which again could be a storytelling tactic, but that piece of information is actually pretty easy to corroborate. The police definitely have the ability to find out if he was at Red Lobster at the time of the murder. Additionally, the police could totally find out whether or not he was allergic to shellfish. And again, they would use that information to corroborate whether or not these lyrics are autobiographical or just telling a story. And before you say it, yes, I am fun at parties. It's just words, detective. Nouns, adjectives. They just happen to be in a dope order, but we ain't got no pearl. Shot up Darnell with a long ass gun and tossed it into the aquarium. I have no idea what that object is. I don't if I had to. Okay, so exactly, autobiographical. He said that he tossed the gun into the aquarium. Presumably that gun was found in the aquarium. You get where I'm going with this analysis. Identify it, I would call it a gun of the long ass variety. Some seaweed in there too. Look. <laughs> So by the way, couple contradictions, there's no way that gun is a nine millimeter. So there you go, that's a point for the suspect, even though that is a long ass gun and it was found in the aquarium. The first verse says that he shot Darnell nine times with a nine millimeter. Contradiction, point to suspect. I had to break it to you. I ain't coming on it. It's Stroke my chin real slow and I'm lying. And I was laughing super hard as Darnell was dying. The name of the album is I Killed Darnell Simmons. It's a concept album. A concept? That's a picture of you. A picture of you. And behind you is Darnell Simmons' body. Pictures can be photoshopped. Okay, a couple of things we need to address here. The chin stroking when you're lying. Could that be used as evidence? Potentially, people have character traits. They do things when they're exaggerating. They do things when they're lying. And again, if this is proven to be autobiographical, it could just be a tell that he's lying. Now, with respect to the photo, have you ever heard the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words? Well, that's probably true. Again, they're gonna corroborate this evidence about the position Darnell's body was found in, the location his body was found in, the time of day he was shot, the day he was shot, all that stuff could be used to corroborate this photo. Coincidence. You're going away for a long time, you understand? You're gonna confess if it's the last thing you ever do, you hear me, Dead Rack? I'll be the body! I'll be the body! He's free to go. What? No, wait, no, 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 no. We have everything we need. No, it was Simmons' girlfriend. She just confessed to the whole thing. Infidelity, crime of passion. Let's go, Mr. Rack. So first of all, you do not need a suspect to confess in order to arrest and charge them. So definitely the detective already has enough evidence to have already arrested our suspect. And just because somebody confessed to the crime doesn't also mean that there can't be co-conspirators, co-defendants, people also involved with the murder, but it is funny. Bonus track, bonus track. I got a ride or die, bitch. I think you get the gist. And when you let me out, I'm gonna blow a little kiss. This is my confession, admissible in court. I killed Darnell Simmons for sport. Ha 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 ha, that's right. I'm a murderer, come get me. Hey, come down the hall, you hey. can't get me. Okay, 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 you got me, you got me. Hey, whoa, 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 damn, 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 ow, ow. Okay, bonus track. He says this is my confession, admissible in court. I killed Darnell Simmons 
for sport. He also states that the girlfriend who confessed did so to get him off the hook. So if you haven't already got the gist already, I definitely think that this evidence is enough to arrest the suspect, but could this evidence be used in court? And if you watched my video yesterday, you'll find it no surprise that I think that answer is yes. If the prosecution were to tender this rap song at trial to try to get it admitted into evidence, I think it probably would be admitted. It is relevant as it pertains to Rule 401 of the Rules of Evidence. It logically corroborates the evidence of what happened. Darnell Miller was shot the day he was shot, the time he was shot, how many times he was shot, the type of gun he was shot, where the gun was found. Although, of course, all these things need to be corroborated by the evidence. What I mean by that is if Darnell was shot on November the 16th with a shotgun, then it wouldn't be admissible. But for the argument, we're going to assume that everything that is said in the rap song is true because that's kind of what makes this sketch funny. Another objection the defense would probably try to make is rule four or three of evidence saying that the rap lyrics are unduly prejudicial and they substantially outweigh any relevancy or information that could be brought by the lyrics. But I think that objection would fail as well. There's an interest in understanding why this incident occurred, how it occurred, what occurred. For instance, the nine shots, the date and time, the throwing the gun into the pond, what kind of gun was thrown into the pond. Yes, of course those rap lyrics are prejudicial against the defendant, but newsflash, all evidence is prejudicial in one way or another. But the key is, is it unduly prejudicial? And no, the court has an interest in understanding what exactly happened and that far outweighs the prejudicial value to the defendant. Again, assuming all this evidence is corroborated, which it is. And I don't even think we need to get into character evidence, rule 404, because this isn't really about character evidence. The rap lyrics itself pertain to the crime alleged. Okay, I think that's it. Thank y'all so much for watching. Please make sure you leave any comments, questions, concerns down below in the comment section. Be more than happy to address them. If you want to be a part of our community, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see y'all later.